So you want to learn how to add realistic texture to a painting? In today's video, I'm going to show you how just one simple trick can do exactly that. Coming up. Hi again there guys, Emma here from Paint and Pino giving you some top tips for all things art and design and today we're going to look at how to add texture to a painting by literally adding sand into the equation. So being lucky enough to live near a beach, there's plenty of sand around so I've just gone and picked up some of my local sand just here and this is what we're actually going to add to this painting. So this is a painting of the pinnacles. There is a video which I'll link below. I actually go down to the pinnacles itself and you get to see this amazing natural wonder that we have just north of Perth here in Western Australia. These things are made out of limestone. They're really, really quite spectacular, but they really stand out against the background. So in order to do something like this, it's really nice to get that textural feel. So all you need to do is just grab yourself some sand. You wanna mix in PVA with this because of course it will then prevent it from falling off the painting in the future. And then you can get some really realistic effects. So let's have a look at how to do this with a step-by-step -step guide coming up. So I've already pre-primed the canvas. This obviously serves two purposes. One is to make sure that the paint doesn't absorb into the canvas too quickly. And because we're doing a nice blended sky, it's gonna really help us blend this cool blue paint that I'm starting with in. So the trick here really to start with is to get those nice straight lines. It's very easy when you're blending to go with rainbow wrists, so they go quite curvy. We just wanna try and keep it nice and straight. So you'll notice as I'm going down with the with the wet primer, it's just gonna get lighter and lighter and just give that subtle sky effect. Just keep working this paint in. Again, keeping those straight lines. All right, now you notice the size brush here I'm using is the 35 mil painter's brush. If you've seen the uh, painting I did showing you how to do impressionist paintings, I like to work with larger brushes because it really helps speed up that process. So I've just mixed in some warm yellow and warm red on some of my brush here, and I wanna keep those streaks. So you keep working that paint in. Keep it nice and loose, so you really can see those paint strokes coming through. But again, trying to keep your wrist straight. Just gonna add a bit more white in here just to get a little bit more definition. The beauty of painting with this style is that you know you, you don't have to pre-mix your paint, you mix the paint onto the canvas as you're working your brush in. So you really get those individual paint strokes coming through. So I just want to work some more definition into the sand area. So it's not just a flat colour of yellow. We want to have some shadows in a moment when we start to paint the pinnacles. So again, stay in size brush, straight on, just marking out where those main pinnacles are going to go. So I'm just using a little hint of white and yellow in here and I'm just simply marking it through. All the paint is still wet because I'm working really quickly today, again, to give that lovely impressionist feel. And what we'll do is we're gonna work, uh, we're gonna work these pinnacles in terms of layers. So we're, we're just literally sort of laying out the background composition at the moment. And then we'll start adding more definition with a smaller brush in a moment. Might just make this my feature pinnacle at the front. Just extend it a little bit higher to sort of make it more prominent. Alrighty, so I've just gone with a slightly smaller uh, size 10 brown head brush now just to work some of those darker definitions into the pinnacle. So I'm trying to avoid having too much brown colour, but there's going to be a variation of different tertiaries, so I'll just add a bit more red into this. So I need to decide where I want my light source to come from. So I'm gonna make sure that it's coming from the right hand side. So obviously the left hand side of all my pinnacles is gonna be where I place the shadow area. Just a little hint of black through here as well to get more definition. And there's no such thing as a mistake. You know, mistakes are, oh, I don't like to call them mistakes, 
if you know if you make a mark on the page that you're not particularly happy with you just keep working into it that's the beauty of working with wet paint going to work some darker colours now at the base area so you really get the shadows coming out. I always find the biggest issue in a way working in a more impressionist style is there is a fine balance between making rough loose marks on the page but then they become too abstract so there's got to be a focus to it and um, you know so I'm really going to make sure that although this is quite an impressionist loose style of painting that it will still have a photographic feel to it in the end and that comes just by working layers and detail into it so if I was to stop now for example uh, you know, there, there isn't enough definition, so what I'm doing here now is just working more and more definition in. I'll go with a smaller brush shortly just to really add some of those details before I then start to work the texture with the sand. Gonna add a little bit more definition here in the background. Just sort of see when there's darker areas in the distance. So I've gone with the fine detail brush now again. Really just like I said earlier, just gonna add a little bit more of that definition now so you can get much more accuracy with this size of brush. And then we're gonna use that same size brush just to add some of the sand. So I've just mixed in some PVA with the actual sand and you're just going to dab this on. It will dry relatively translucent, so obviously the glue is going to dry translucent. The sand, of course, is always going to be the sand colour, but we'll just work a little bit more of that uh, colour over if we lose too much of that colour at the end, which I don't think we're going to. We'll have a look, see what happens. So just sporadically putting it on here, just to give a suggestion of the, the texture. You know, you've got to find a balance. If you have too much glue, it's going to be too wet. And obviously if you have too little glue, it's going to be really hard to put onto your page and onto the canvas. It's going to be very likely to fall off as well. So it's, you know, it's pretty much 50-50, but it's almost to feel and to touch. I'm just going to work a little bit more on this side here. Be my feature pinnacle. add a little bit more of that darker colour which we've lost a little bit with the sand just to really exaggerate those shadow and especially at the base you know that's when it really starts to become photographic so I'm just working a hint of that shadow area right at the base of each pinnacle so you can see where where those shadow lines are coming out
the hardest thing when you're painting is knowing when to stop. It's amazing how many times you can overwork a painting. So um, it really is a decision that you've got to decide when you're quite satisfied with. So I think just a little bit more details here. I'm pretty happy with that. There you have it, Pinnacles by the Daytime. So there you have it guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video on how to add realistic texture to a painting just like this, just simply adding sand and a bit of PVA. If you have enjoyed the video then please do hit that like button just below as it really does help our channel. And if you'd like to see some more weekly top tips just like this one, we do upload weekly videos so do hit that subscription and that notification bell so that you know when we come back online. Alrighty guys, we'll see you next time, happy painting.